Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. I'm very excited to have Franz Wagner with us today from the Orlando Magic to talk about a couple plays. So, uh, Franz, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Thanks for having me. Hey, I appreciate it. I followed you across the country to get this interview. I'm really excited to talk to you about a little bit of some footwork stuff. So, you have an interesting play you have uh, in, the, in the game recently where you go off of basically one foot on a step through. Now, a lot of people who we talk to think that's a travel, and I'm yeah. wondering, how do you know that this was a deal? Well, I, I would say in college, it was definitely called as a travel. Mm -hmm. um, but just, just watching people like DeMar DeRozan, I think he does it a lot. Um, and really, it's I think especially for people with uh, you know, long legs my, like myself, I think it's a great tool to have when you know st stop on two feet and uh, you can really use an extra step to get an advantage. So talk to me about how did you know how to make it in this play? What, what worked for you or as you were reading the defense that made it seem like, oh, this is the way I want to get this shot off? Well, this was last game against the Suns. Um, T. Ross did a pretty good job of, of guarding the initial pick and roll. And um, I think it's just hard for, for people, once I stop on two feet in the paint, um, to guard every pivot. And he did a pretty good job on the first first couple. And then, yeah, just work, working with these long, with long legs, um, I think just that extra step, extra long step gives me an advantage a lot of times. All right, cool. Well, let's go on to the next one because we have even more interesting footwork here. So we talk all about one foot floaters, but when you get to the off foot floater, there seems to be another advantage there when you're jumping yeah. off of the same foot as the same hand you're shooting. So talk to us about how you develop this. I would just say, I mean, growing up, we just would shoot layups or floaters or whatever, um, just off of, of all types of combinations, um, just off of one foot, off two feet. Um, you know, kind of changing the rhythm because a lot of times people want to time up to, to block the shot or contest it. So I think, um, you know, just growing up, we, we did a lot of layups where we didn't actually use both steps. We just used the first one to kind of offset that rhythm. Well, let me ask you this. You're listed at, like, how tall are you listed at? Probably 6'10 six, six, or something like six, that. 6'10. Yeah. Now, when did you get, like, to be a big man when you, get, when you got tall? How old were you? Um, I, it was pretty late. I was probably... 16 when really I got my growth spurt. So before that, I was more of a two guard, point guard, um, which was cool for my development, but uh, yeah, I started growing pretty much when I was 15, 16. So does that explain, now in theory, in Europe, you would be taught these things even if you were really tall anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was very lucky with the coach that we had in Berlin. Um, everybody pretty much did guard kind of drills. Because um, at the start, you don't know how, much, how, how tall you're going to be at the end. So. I was really lucky with the coaches I had going on. Fantastic. Well, let's, have, let's get to one shot here on the three-pointer yeah. because what's great is that you have a varied game. You get to go and shoot from the outside, you go inside. So on this one, uh, do, can you walk us through what this play action is and then how you knew that you wanted to pull up for a three? Yeah, I think there's just random action. Um, you know, a lot of times these empty corner pick and rolls are, are really hard to guard. Um, and Wendell is a great screener. so. Um, I think it's a good action for our team, um, and I'm a good right-hand driver, making decisions going to my right, so I think uh, some adjustments that, that people make is, is going under the screen, and um, this, is, this is something that I got to work on and continue to shoot, because you know, when people go under, they're, they're leaving me open out there, and um, if I continue to make this, um, you know they're going to have to go over, and that's when everything opens up for us. So you prefer probably to then come out of that left corner more often so that you can then turn with your right hand in the middle? I'm not gonna say I prefer. Um, you know, I can I can do both, but um, it happens a lot in the game. So, um, you know, I, got, I obviously I got to continue to work on everything, but I think it's good action for our team. Well, let's finish with a really fun one, which is uh, you had an amazing shot at the end of the first quarter. Uh, and I'm just kind of curious, do you even do you work on shots like these where it's like one full court pass and you got to turn and can't really see the rim? Um, we work on all types of shots. I would say we work a lot on the skill to adjust to whatever the situation is. So we don't really shoot a lot of 10, 10 of the same shot in a row in a, in a row in practice. So um, I think I've gotten good at kind of adjusting in split second uh, moments uh, to you know whatever is out there. Well, did you know it was going in before you before it went in? Uh, I shot it really high because Markinen had a great contest on it. Mm -hmm. um, it looked good from where I was, but I, I did think uh, it was a little high, but, you know, luckily it went in. Okay, yeah. great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Franz. Yeah, I really no appreciate it. And don't forget, sports fans, it's a B-Ball Breakdown. We're not a channel. We're a conversation. Are you in? Are you in, Franz? I am in. All appreciate right. you.